Venus. It is commonly known as Earth's twin sister, given that it is similar in size, mass, and proximity to the Sun. However, it couldn't be more radically different than our home planet. Venus has a longer rotation period than any other planet in the solar system. It rotates in the opposite direction. It does not have any natural satellites, and temps on the surface can reach 863 degrees Fahrenheit. Could there be a reason why this completely different planet is called our sister planet? After the Sun and the Moon, Venus is the third brightest body in our sky. And because of this, most experts believe this is why it received lots of attention from all the great ancient civilizations. But could Venus have played another role in the history of our planet, as well as the beginning of our civilization? In Roman mythology, Venus was the goddess of love, sex, beauty, and fertility. She was the Roman counterpart to the Greek Aphrodite. However, Roman Venus had many abilities beyond the Greek Aphrodite. She was also the goddess of victory. According to Hesiod's Theogony, Aphrodite was born of the foam from the sea after Saturn, Greek Cronus, castrated his father Uranus, and his blood fell to the sea. There are countless pieces of artwork where she emerges from the sea as if born from the bottom of the ocean. But according to the Electric Universe team, although this is recorded as a myth, there might be evidence that millions of people on Earth could have witnessed the birth of Venus in the sky 10,000 years ago. To the ancients, they witnessed the expulsion and departure from Saturn. There would have been an ionospheric display which would have been quite spectacular. The whole thing would have lit up. Saturn was trying desperately to remove charge and to satisfy its environment. The effect would be of like the expulsion of part of the surface of Saturn. And remember that even though it was a brown dwarf star, every star has a planetary core. So the material would have been hot and it would have been propelled into space by the electric force, which can overcome gravity with no trouble at all. So something the size of Venus or a planetary sized object can be expelled from another more giant planetary object. The act of ejection, if Saturn's rotating this way, for argument's sake, the ejected matter will eventually tend to coalesce as the preceding matter gains in mass and slows down. The matter following will pile up and form a large object. If Saturn's rotating this way, this will be given a backward kick, just like a meshing gears, which means that this planet, this newly formed planet, is glowing red hot and it is rotating slightly backwards. It doesn't stay there long enough to stabilize its rotation to match its orbital rate around its parent, like all other satellites tend to do. Wall believes this newly formed satellite was none other than Venus. Now, Venus having been expelled during this process, Saturn is also accelerating away from its entourage of planets. And in doing so, it would spiral in and form part of the polar column. Now, its tail is not lost during all of this, and this spiraling is shown in the eye of Ra, you know, the Egyptian eye, where you have this curl beneath the eye. That is a representation of Venus as it's establishing its own journey after separation from proto-Saturn. Of course, this discharging would have made it a phenomenal sight in the sky. The team dissects more interpretations of this newly formed goddess in the sky. The whole episode of Venus as a soul is, is a fascinating story. It's one that will be familiar with the dying god myth made famous by James Frazier's Golden Bough series. And in different exemplars of that myth, the great god's lock of hair disappears, uh, runs off with his soul. And so the example from the Greek myth would be King Terralus, his lock of hair rushes off as a woman called Kamato. And Kamato is an epithet of 
Aphrodite. As you look into those myths around the globe, they're especially popular in, in ancient Egypt where a lock of hair is responsible for early disasters. You quickly figure out or deduce that the planet Venus during its comet-like phase was interpreted as a lock of hair. And so the planet Venus was engaged in a series of activities spanning many hundreds of years, of course, and so it wasn't just a, a stable object in the sky. So at one time it, it would look like an eye, let's say, when in conjunction with Mars. At, at another time it would look like a dragon. But in one of the earliest episodes is when the great god dies and she departs as a comet-like object and is said to have wandered about the sky. And the goddesses in question, like Isis, Aphrodite would be the other, they are always wandering with disheveled hair, a classic example of a comet. And so they had certain rituals and this was all part of worshiping departed souls. Elitis is the Greek word for wanderer. So the, the wandering goddess is simply a variation upon the global motif of the planet Venus as a mourning goddess, as in M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. So that's like when Ishtar's lover dies, she mourns, wanders the world mourning. When Osiris dies, Isis wanders the world with disheveled hair, mourning the loss of her consort. And that is archetypal myth associated with the planet Venus. Venus, according to ancient accounts, would make such a spectacle in the sky that it would lend itself to more archetypes that show up in our modern world. This thing would draw out into a tail which would then, by the time it came around again, would close the circuit and there would be a complete circle. It would be the Ouroboros, you know, the snake swallowing its tail image. And then over a short period of time, because proto-Saturn at all of this time is trying to accelerate away from its satellites, Venus would keep circling, but it would spiral back until it was in this lineup along with Mars and Earth. And then you would have this amazing image of these concentric circles. And it's funny that when you look at images from Roman times and so on, this circle with an inner circle and spokes and a raised boss or hub or axle. It's a universal piece of symbolism. And you get the idea that this is where the cosmic wheel, the idea of the wheel really was seen in the sky, the archetype of the wheel, with the raised axle or the red center, which was Mars. Could the symbol of the wheel in the sky have been the inspiration for the use of the wheel in mysticism, and also the creation of a wheel for practical use? Our team reminds us that Venus inspired Earthlings as well as it tortured them. And this symbolism of the evil goddess can be seen throughout many of the mythologies. In order to understand the symbolism associated with the planet Venus, it's important to remember that these events went on over the course of centuries. And so Venus endured some periods of tremendous catastrophe and electrical interactions, and then there were some more stable episodes where she took on a completely different appearance. The thematic pattern of the goddess as a terrible dragon-like woman and or uh, Medusa has reference to her wildly disheveled hair uh, projecting outwards like spiraling snakes. The dragon in the ancient myths has seven heads. In the early pictures from Mesopotamia, it will show a dragon with seven heads and the, the warrior heroes conquering that dragon. Well, those seven heads elsewhere appear on the head of the mother goddess, virtually inseparable. The writhing serpentine hair-like projections spiraling from the head of the Medusa are the same as the seven heads of the dragon. And so that's where the Medusa originated, and it's certainly a classic symbol of the terrible goddess. Another very common myth is, is called the goddess is the hag myth, and that's where this horribly disheveled, ugly, witch-like goddess 
holds the key to the kingdom, and she's always trying to find some warrior to marry her. And of course, they always refuse. Finally, one warrior is brave enough to, to try and take her on, and he instantly becomes the king of the world. So that's the story of the goddess turning from the ugly, dragon-like, Eye of Horus type of situation and becoming this beautiful Venusian goddess that's now the consort of the king moving forward. At a subsequent period, after Venus became stabilized in its orbit and circled around Mars, it takes on a beautiful appearance. 